Now introducing your host, Alicia Alvarado. Hey, welcome back to your podcast, AMO Podcast, with your host, myself, Alicia Alvarado. Now, I have missed I have missed these past two weeks. Uh, I have not been here. A lot has happened these past two weeks from getting sick to traveling um, with last minute plans. So a lot has happened, uh, but nonetheless, I am back. I have missed you guys. I have missed just being able to come on, um, one, spread the gospel, and two, really just share my heart. Um, so I definitely wanna get back to that, um, and I'll definitely be better at checking in. Ammo is still fairly new, so if this is your first time welcome now with this new year that has approached a lot has happened in my personal life to the point where um, there has been some changes Uh, for example instead of having a podcast every week there will be a podcast every other week they will typically be longer than what I've done before in the past however this will also give me an opportunity to create and post things on other uh, social media platforms now um, at the beginning of the year we talked about setting goals we talked about how um, we can just be better when it comes to, you know, again, meeting goals or just being a better us, right? And so I have some goals that I've put down in my planner that I want to meet. And I just had to adjust some things. And one of them is that, you know, just moving this podcast to once every other week. And then from there, it also challenges me to post on other social media platforms. So those are my goals for this in particular. Um, But I definitely... um, I'm so happy to be here. For those who are new, be sure to subscribe to this podcast, to this YouTube channel, and of course, follow us on all social media platforms. So I am just going to go ahead and dive right in. Um, But before I do, I know that we talked about growing, whether it's financially, whether it's health-wise, whether it's being better in our prayer life. So if that is something that you started at the beginning of the year or within January, how is it going? Have you gotten better? Are you still pushing towards those goals? I would love to know and talk about that with you. But let's go ahead and dive in on this podcast. I want to touch the story of when Jesus walks on water. The story does not get old, so let's go ahead and dive in and break it down. No pun intended, right? When my husband read that, he was like, oh, diving in. That's great. So this is how I want to do it. I want to read the passage, which is Matthew 14, 22 through 33. So if you're listening to this and you're at home, bring out your Bible. Let's get into the Word together. Get a pen. Let's write notes. If you are in the car, if you're doing something else and you're listening, awesome, great. Let's make this a note to go back home and start reading from there. I started a Bible plan, and part of that Bible plan starts at different areas of the Bible, and um, one of those areas was Matthew, and I ran into this story, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so good. So let me go ahead and just read that for you. Let's see. So we're in Matthew 14, 22. It says, Jesus walks on the water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, after he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was gone. Excuse me. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, came toward Jesus, But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began sinking, cried out loud, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why do you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. That story, there is so many parts where I'm like, ooh, this is so good. The story itself, when I first, first read this in my life, 
I thought the coolest thing was Peter walking on water. Um, but of course, even Jesus walking on water was also cool. So, but as, as I got to get older and I started to study, um, you know, what this means and what this means to me, there's just so much juice behind it. So what I'm going to do is let's go in here. There's definitely a lot to take in within the story, but it's all good. So what I have done is I have wrote some notes down that I want to point out, that I want to talk about, that I want to share. So let's go ahead and touch base. So from the beginning, immediately Jesus made the disciples get down into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side. While he dismissed the crowd, after he had dismissed them, he went up to a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land. Now, in this particular story, it uses the word buffeted. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And that means especially of wind or waves. Strike repeatedly and violently. Batter the rough seas buffered this coast. To knock over or off course, pound, push against, or strike. That is what was going on in this boat. This boat was being tossed to and from, from the winds, with the waves. I don't know if you, I'm a land person, but if you have ever been on a boat where it might be a little windy or maybe you have seen a boat come next to you really fast and it really just moves your boat, um, that can be kind of scary. So this definition, one of the words is violently. So, I mean, I'm thinking that, what is it, Ocean 12 or 12 Ocean? Don't judge me. I'm thinking like big waves, like those people who go out fishing, like for a job half of their life or half of their year, and they're there in all these winds and waves. That's what I'm thinking that this is happening. To strike, to push, to pound against, I can't do it. I would be scared for sure. Um, by the waves, because the wind was against it. Shortly, after dawn, Jesus went out to them walking on the lake. Now, when I first read this, I thought to myself, Jesus saw this happening to this boat. And at no point did he say, oh my gosh, I need to go. I need to go right now. That's crazy. Some of them are probably overboard, but he didn't run to the lake. It just says, that he went out to them. It, it didn't. He didn't say, oh my gosh, I got to go help my babies. He didn't fear. Jesus didn't fear when he saw the boat with his disciples in it. He just went. He took his time. It doesn't say that he ran. It doesn't say that he was like in a hurry. Um, I like to look at this in a practical sense. When we go through things in life and we know God sees us struggling, we want him there immediately. We want him to fix whatever is going on immediately. There's been times in my personal life where I'm like, I mean, this might be crazy to even hear, but when I went through my loss or when I would go through, like when I had lost my brother and then my dad and the drama from the my side, from my dad's side of the family or from my mom's side of the family, the drama that just came with it, the anxiety, I was like, I would rather honestly be the one that's dying. And that sounds really crazy, but there was just so much drama and anxiety. And I just didn't get a lot of the things that people were saying about us. And I was overwhelmed. And I'm like, man, God, like, can you please do something about it? Or the times where I was just really in need and going through dark times, I'm like, man, like, why don't you come and save me right now? Um, but I want to remind you today, God sees you. He sees, he sees what you're going through. He sees you. And a lot of us kind of go through life and we're like, oh my gosh, I'm such in darkness. Well, I want to let you know that there's no darkness when God is looking or when God is there, right? He, there's light wherever God is. And so if he's next to you, it's not that it's dark too and God can't see you. He, he can see you. And I want to let you know that he is on your way. So whatever you are praying for, whatever you are believing for, just know that God is on your is on his way. He sees what you are going through. He hears every prayer that you have made. None of your, none of your prayers are going in void. He sees everything. Now, when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. 
It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, like, take courage. It's it's me. Don't be afraid. A lot of us go through things um, and we hear and we hear God and we're like, oh, is it God? Oh my gosh, I'm afraid. Um, but hearing those words, take courage. It is I, don't be afraid. It's I, the great I am. It's I, your father. It's I, the one who comforts you and I am in the midst of you. And so something like that to hear and you don't have to hear it from a particular person. Open your word. Get your daily bread. He is there and he is comforting. And they say to him, Lord, is it you? Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. So he was testing him. He was, if this is really you, God, like tell me to go to you on this water. Then Peter got down out of the boat and walked on water and came toward Jesus. Now, let's just pause right there because one, Jesus is walking on water. And people, the, the, the disciples seeing this, they either are afraid or they're, you know, like, they think they're crazy. But, of course, God reassures them, like, no, it's, it's really me. And so the fact that... Like, The fact that Peter is walking on water, right? So it's not just one, it's two. And let's take a moment right there and think about the feeling that Peter must have felt, right? When we begin to, when he, when he began to walk on water, first of all, that's amazing. But now like, let's think about um, the time in your life when you felt God's presence while going through a tough time. I know that when I moved from Texas to Ohio, I was so afraid. At that moment, when I was 21 years old, I was needed at home. My mom needed me to help with the kids. She was going through a divorce, so she was working two, three jobs sometimes. She was putting herself through police academy. I'm so proud of her. I love my mother. Um, And she was just working so hard. And there I was as a teenager. And by teenager, I mean I was 18. I was 18 and I know I was living reckless at the time. And so her dependency was only so much as much as I was at home. So if I was home, I was doing something right with the kids. I was either taking care of them, feeding them, getting ready, getting them ready for school. And so there was a dependency there. Now I knew I was becoming and getting in a season where I needed to leave home, you know, from 18 to 21. It doesn't sound like a lot of years, but a lot happened in my life in those years. I was drinking heavily. I was a social smoker. I smoked a blunt that was mixed with acid and my I went on the craziest trip ever of hallucination. I put myself in situations where I just belittled myself as a woman. And so when I felt the call of God, when I started to dive into his word and getting involved with church, and I knew that he was calling me to much more, to more than just what I was in in that current situation, I knew he was calling me out. And I just didn't know when, where, or how, but I was led to where I'm at now, Columbus, Ohio. And there I, I attended a Bible college and it was great. But to that that jump from Texas to Ohio was huge, right? I didn't have family. I didn't have friends. I knew I had to break up with my boyfriend at the time. I hated my dad. And one of the things I needed to do was to tell him that I forgive him and that I love him. And that's a whole different story because there was drama that came with that. But I I did exactly what God wanted me to do. I started to tithe and to give offerings, and I broke up with my boyfriend, and I felt God's presence so heavy in those moments. I knew that what God was wanting me to do, I was doing, and I was like walking on water. I was doing what I thought was impossible. I was doing what, you know, my my family, we either went to college, the military, or you were a bum, right? We, what we know now about school and education and trade school, I didn't know that back then. And so that jump, that leap of faith was so huge for me that I 
was so much at peace. Now, were there troubles here and there? Yes, but God took care of everything. He took care of my schooling. He took care of my transportation. He took care of my, if I needed some income as a broke college student. He took care of if I needed clothes and he took care with of me when it came to community and just growing in life and in ministry. And as a student of his word, he I felt like I was walking on water, you know? When we read this story, I don't know if if you guys heard, I don't know when y'all heard the story, but I mean, to this day, I'm like, man, like, hey God, if I go next to this pool, will I walk on water? But it's beyond just walking on water. It's, it's, It's walking through something that you thought you could never do. It's walking through something that you thought, man, if I ever do this, I'm gonna die or sink. But when you are with Christ and when you're walking with Christ, walking on water seems like nothing. And so that's it exactly what happened. He, Peter cried out to Christ and said, if that is you, like, let me come to you on the water. And Jesus granted him that. He, he went towards Jesus. He had his eyes on Jesus and behold, he was walking on water with Christ. He was there face to face. But then the Bible says, when he saw the wind, he was afraid and started to sink. Now, in the midst of my transition from going to Texas, to Ohio, um, my time in Ohio, I started dating, and then I, we were talking about marriage, and man, I felt... I felt myself sinking. And that's what happened here. When you when we see the things that things are becoming a bit scary, when we see how how things could end up, when we see how what the world is saying and what the world is doing, when we take our eyes off God, we sink. And I found myself doing that. I I got caught up here in Ohio and you know, I my, I wasn't in my word on a daily. I wasn't praying on a daily. Um, I was spiritually starving myself. I wasn't getting my daily bread. I, I just began to lose focus on the truth and I started to believe everything and everyone around us. And because of that, I started to sink. And so what do we do or what should we do whenever we begin to sink. So just think about that. Whenever you are are in a situation, our eyes need to continue to stay on God. Our eyes need to continue to stay on the vision that he has given us. And that is life. That is hope. That is um, to be wealthy in within his word, within his presence to, he's going to provide all those things for us. And what happened here is Peter's walking on water And he sees the very thing that God told him not to be afraid of because I'm here. And he got afraid. And so I think about that, like, man, like how many times was I so on fire for Christ and then something happened, took my eyes off Christ, and man, now I'm sinking. But what did Peter do when he started to sink? He cried out. He said, Lord, save me. That's all he had to say. He didn't have to do a five-minute prayer, or uh, sorry, an hour prayer. He didn't have to fast for 30 days. He didn't have to, um, you know, baptize himself in the water that he was sinking in because immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. And so I think we get so caught up and man, I'm sinking. That's it. I'm dying. RIP. Go get my funeral uh, stuff together, go pick out a tomb for me. And, and I think we start to get pity on ourselves and we start to drown. And like, have you seen those movies or those videos of, um, you know, you've got a five-year-old who thinks they're drowning and the parents are like, just stand up, you know, just stand up. And so we got too dramatic that we thought we were going to die. And I can only imagine Peter just splashing everywhere. And us as, you know, sometimes hard-headed us or childish us, we don't realize like, man, just stop focusing on everything else and look at Christ. And as soon as you say, Lord, save me, God's not going to say, well, I got to teach you a lesson real quick. He's not going to say, you know what? You better breathe in a little tighter because the water's getting over your nose. So hold on to your breath. No, he reached out. Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Could, Could Jesus have let his disciples sink? Yes. But did he? No. So why do we think God is going to let us sink? Trust in him. I know friends that have started businesses 
<clears throat> and I, <laughs> I don't know if she listens to this or if she's watching this online um, on one of the social media platforms, but one of my friends from church, she started a business and one day she just started to become distant. And I said, girl, what's the matter? Like what's going on? And immediately tears. And she just started giving me her concerns. And I'm like, if God told you, then he is going to fulfill it. If God gave you that building to do your business, then he is going to be the businessman that he said he was going to be. He is going to provide everything for you. And I have seen her flourish and, and so much. I have seen her business go crazy. I have seen, she is just posting all about it, all because she said, God, Lord, save me. Save, you gave me this, bless me, right? And so he did. He didn't just let her windle down. He didn't let her drown. He got back up. How many times have you caught yourself praying so hard for something and God, and God didn't come in time and you're like, oh, that's it. I guess I'm going to give up. No, no, no. Take heart in what you're doing. Hold on to his word. Hold on to his promises. If you're thinking, okay, he's coming. He he is coming to you. You may be being tossed in the winds, but he is coming to you. Keep your eye on Christ. And when this happened, when Peter, when he got, when he picked up Peter, he said, you have little faith. He said, why do you doubt? Why do we find ourselves doubting what the Lord has put before us? Why are we doubting? Is it because it didn't come on time? Is it because it didn't come in the order that he said it was going to do? Is it because it didn't come in the gift wrapped box that he said he was going to give it to you? Is it because he didn't bless you in public? Is it because he didn't fulfill every need and desire of yours? Stop being selfish. Keep your eye on Christ and he'll bless you. And he says, you have little faith. He said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshiped him, saying, truly, you are the son of God. Now, as we read this, I keep, I, I, I see this as a learning lesson, a reminder to us to keep your eyes on God. He's going to come to you. Are you struggling? Probably. Are you going through something right now? Probably. But has God forsaken you? No. Have you called on to his name? Well, you see, I haven't had prayer time. Go to him. Let him know. I know. So God is our father and he wants us. He wants us to cry out to him. He loves hearing our voice from his throne. He is the Abba Father, the great I am, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the, the precious mighty king. Like he loves when he hears his people call on to him. He loves it. And I'm sure in this moment of sinking, Peter realized he had nothing to hold on to when he was sinking. And just like us, it's in our nature to try to hold on to anything but God to try to come up with the plan B if plan A doesn't work. If it doesn't follow through, and but, but when you cry out to your father, he will be there. Now, if you're one of those people that have a plan B because plan A doesn't work, I, by no means am I saying that planning is something you shouldn't do. Planning is something that you should do. But let me tell you something. When you plan, write it down and give it to the Lord and say, you know what, Lord, here is what I feel that you know, here are my plans. But if you want to change it, I give you permission to change it. I give you permission to just come into the schedule of mine. And I pray that your spirit leads me. And so that's what happened here. Peter was pushing and trying to flap his hands and trying to think of ways of how not to sink. And we think of everything but God. In this moment, I just pray that wherever you're at, that you turn to God first, that you turn to God first and you say, you know what, God, I surrender everything to you. I surrender my doubt. I surrender my, my fears. I surrender my plans. I surrender my desires to you, God, because without you, I am going to sink. And I pray that he just covers you. He covers every plan and desire that he has placed in you. And I just pray that he show you his way and not yours. And when you realize that you're not going by your map and it's God's map, that map is going to look a little more easier than you think. 
And so, again, take heart in all that you do and all that God has, and just know that God is with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Today, I just want to encourage you to keep your eyes on Christ. Allow Him to walk with you in the midst of being tossed and battered, in the midst of your ups and downs. Don't forget, God is with you, with you through it all. Amen. Now, if this is something that encouraged you, I I do uh, wish that you share this with your friends. I do wish that you share this with your family. Follow us on social media. I honestly loved being able to dive into the word and break it down. That's probably something that you'll start seeing on this podcast more of um, because we need his word. We need his daily word. And I, and I pray that it touched you. And I just pray that, you know, wherever you're at that that God sees your heart. I pray that um, you know you're able to follow us on social media. Pray, pray for me. Pray for my family. Um, there's so much, so many things I want to share with you guys, um, but all in due time. Um, and so be sure to subscribe to our YouTube YouTube channel. Be sure to follow our podcast. Make sure you put them on your favorites so every time we post, you guys get alerted. And follow us on Facebook and Instagram. And you guys have a good day. Talk to y'all later. Bye.